Hello, investors. Welcome to the podcast for the month of May. Today, we'll update on what's happening in the market, what's happening in the economy, and therefore, how should you go about investing? Uh, so if you look at the month of April, we saw a sharp up move in equity markets. Nifty went up by 4.1% uh, as macro concerns abated. And we also saw a return of foreign institutional investors investing uh, in Indian markets. So FIA flows increased last month. Uh, market has lapped up the recent improvement in India's macro. What happened really on the macro front was we saw uh, inflation peaking. We saw, therefore, peaking in interest rates. And we saw better external position. The balance of payment uh, was has improved for India overall. So that's another positive. If you look at the GDP, the trajectory continues to progress steadily with infrastructure and capex also showing good growth. There are also signs of easing inflation numbers resulting in the RBI taking a pause in its rate hikes. Although it is alert to any risk to inflation assumptions due to weather shocks, for example, we saw unseasonal rains. We are seeing heat waves in April and May. And there is a threat of El Nino, something that drives rain away from India in, in simple terms, could impact the coming monsoon. So overall, these risks remain. But overall, we think that inflation is coming down and will continue to inch lower. The bulk of the high frequency indicators indicate positive momentum in the economy. Uh, things like services, PMI, the GST collections, e-way bills, and of course, credit growth has been very, very robust. So uh, if you look at coming to the uh, earnings of companies that were declared last month and this month, uh, we saw banking and auto results were mostly in line and in some cases also beat expectations. FMCG results were mixed while IT results were a bit disappointing. And this is more on expected lines, nothing, nothing surprising, uh, albeit uh, the surprises were on the positive side if, if there were such. We note continued weakness across most consumption categories in the fourth quarter, which is likely to improve, although lending remained very, very robust. So that, that is a positive sign that we're seeing in the economy. Outsourcing companies were impacted by a weak global demand environment like the IT outsourcing. Coming to markets, uh, the 10-year GSEC yield rallied 2.65%. The Dow also rallied 2.5%, uh, while NASDAQ was almost flat last month. The Brent crude oil price corrected by roughly 5% at, as markets assessed slowdown in global growth, which is uh, positive for Indian markets, Indian economy. The U.S. 10-year yield also rallied 3% for the month in expectations that the Fed will ease uh, or at least halt rate increases going forward and possibly cut rates down the road. So from a growth perspective, we saw that IMF ex is expecting India's growth to, to be at 5.9% in the current fiscal year, though it warned that turmoil in the financial system could hurt global growth and therefore Indian growth as well. It forecasts global real GDP growth at 2.8% this year, 2023, and 3% for next year, that is 2024. Inflation, uh, if you look at India's CPI, has come down below the 6% mark for the first time in 2023 to touch 5.66% in March. Uh, WPI wholesale inflation for the month of March came in much lower at 1.34%. If you look at in February, it was a 3.85%, so more than half there. Uh, GST collections, I think, uh, were at $1.87 trillion in April, which is, I think, the highest collection ever that we have seen. Interest rates in India are at normalized levels and may not differ, and therefore may not differ consumption or CAPEX spends. Uh, peaking rates uh, may address concerns about the negative impact of higher interest rates on housing demand. Housing has been... Uh, one of the big drivers for the Indian economy. And given that rate speaking uh, may lead to reduce stress uh, on the borrowing front and therefore housing demand may continue going forward. Notwithstanding the global concerns, India is on a path of apex cycle recovery very clearly. We hope that improved macro percolates into better micro for over the next few months, especially the rural economy, which has not grown as 
as fast or has not recovered as fast as what we saw in the urban economy. So I think rural is where uh, we need to see some more recovery going forward. We expect a gradual recovery in domestic consumption over the next two to four quarters. The Indian market is trading at reasonable valuations compared with recent history and bond yields after lackluster returns over the past 18 to 20 months. Uh, risk emerged from external cyclical factors rather than domestic structural factors. Risk of a deep recession in the U.S. will be on export and capex outlooks, thereby delaying the virtuous growth cycle. Risk from global financial conditions tightening further could also weigh on the growth outlook. But overall, there is robustness. And uh, from a risk reward perspective, it looks like more positive news for investors. Uh, coming to the sectors, uh, uh, if you remember uh, right at the start of the year, we highlighted three sectors. Just wanted to give you some updates on them, uh, which were banking, IT, and auto sectors. So we'll, let's start with banking. Uh, so there has been a moderation in pace of economic recovery due to rapid interest rate hikes and high inflation over past few quarters. As most rate hikes are behind us and inflation is likely to moderate from here, economic recovery is likely to gain strength. Though credit growth could moderate from current high levels, it is likely to be reasonably good in the medium term. Credit cost and non-performing assets would continue to be muted as economy is a natural upcycle and corporates have deleveraged their balance sheets. Though net interest margins, which is an indicator of their profitability, could moderate as deposits would be repriced with higher prevailing interest rates, credit growth would take care of reasonable earnings growth in the medium term. So overall, we are still very positive on the banking cycle given high credit growth and the pressure on NIMS uh, may be there in the short term, but uh, going beyond short term, I think uh, banks will be in a better position. Coming to the IT sector, uh, given the global macro environment, growth could moderate in the near term. There are enough margin levers for most companies. There is scope for increasing utilization and reduction in reliance on subcontractors, typically at 25 to 50% premium to in-house talent is the cost of subcontracting. Earnings growth could be faster than revenue growth in the near term. Most tier one IT names are factoring growth rates that are at reasonable discount to the growth rates over the past decade. Unlike what we saw in uh, years from 2017 to 2020, which was uh, a digital shift that we saw, there is no imminent threat of a technology transition. So that's beneficial. The cloud transformation has more room, estimated migration level at 30 to 35% versus medium term conservative potential of 50%. And order books continue to be stable. As the global economy settles, we could see a decent pickup in growth. So I think much of the pessimism is already priced in at the markets. Maybe there won't be much downsides. And uh, as things settle down, I think there could be more upsides coming on for the sector. Auto, coming to the auto sector, auto sector has seen high, uh, high price hikes over the past few years due to change in regulatory norms and commodity price inflation. Two-wheelers have lagged in recovery, but the abnormal 35% fall over FI19 to 22 creates a very favorable base for the segment that is core to personal mobility. We believe two-wheelers are ripe for a replacement cycle as well. Affordability is expected to improve as space of future rate hikes are likely to be minimal as input prices are softening and near-term regulatory changes doesn't require price hikes of a high quantum. So uh, overall, most auto segments are expected to grow in the current year. And if the rural economy uh, picks pace, I think there could be a reasonably good demand for autos and therefore uh, better revenue growth and profitability for the sector. So overall, uh, uh, we still like these three sectors, banking, IT, and auto. And in our portfolios, we have a decent weight to these sectors. But overall, I think equity markets, given the upcycle that we're seeing in the economy, which is likely to persist and therefore benefit many sectors, and therefore investors should uh, allocate to uh, equities in a larger way, uh, as we have said in the 12-2080, uh, 
core equity allocation should be a high allocation of 80%. And I think uh, investors invested in that manner will benefit from the cyclical up re uh, recovery that we are seeing in markets. So overall, I think if you're underinvested, you could inch up your investments. If you're investing systematically, keep a continue to invest systematically. It could be, uh, if, if there are any corrections in markets, you could should lap up that opportunity to increase your allocation and build your portfolio. Uh, so I think take advantage of the up cycle that we're seeing. And from a portfolio perspective, we think that uh, none of the markets are at extremes. There is potential for all three, and therefore an asset allocation strategy would also work well in case if there are any risks that kind of appear and impact the economy and markets. So overall, a diversified portfolio of 12, 20, 80 would work well in this scenario. That will help you to uh, capitalize on the upcycle in the economy and make uh, sure that you are covered for any risks uh, that could impact your returns. So overall, with that, I'll sign off for this month, uh, wishing you happy investing, and we'll catch up next month. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.